podcast network. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the X Lives Podcast. I am your host, Patrick C. Huerta. On this podcast, we talk about our present, our future, and more importantly, our past. The good, the bad, and the fuzzy. Stories from our X Lives. Like, share, and subscribe on whichever platform you use to listen to the podcast. Follow the Babacoa Core Podcast Network on Instagram and Facebook at Babacoa Core. All the links to most of our podcast platforms can be found on the website www.babacoacore.com. Any questions, comments, or to share your stories from your past on the X Lives Podcast, send emails to xlivespod at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy these episodes. This is X Lives. What is up, everybody? Welcome to X Lives. I got my guest here, Gabby Tijerina. Thank you for coming out. Thanks for having me. Yeah. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. We had to reschedule because the whole Thanksgiving break. I've taken a couple weeks off, so I'm, I'm just as nervous as you doing this podcast, too. <laughs> really? Wait, you're not working right now? No, I mean, as far as from doing the podcast. Oh, okay. Welcome yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was your Thanksgiving? Um, it was good. Family's a little stressful sometimes, you know, it's one of those things. Yeah. But it's good for you because you get to take a break because you're, you're, your family's in Laredo and you're here. So you're not like really attached to them. Is that right? I am very attached to them. My, my mom lives here. Oh, okay. And my brother's in Austin, but then my dad and the rest of my, like my cousins and stuff are mostly in Laredo. So. Oh, okay. Uh, well, cool. Thanks for doing this. Uh, before we jump into anything, let's do the plugs, like social media, where can people find you, any shows you got coming up? Sure. So um, you can follow me. I'm mostly on Instagram and Twitter. I don't even use Facebook, hardly. Um, at Gabby I Tijerina, G-A-B-Y-I-T-I-J-E-R-I-N-A. That's me. And yeah. shows, what do I have? Oh, I have a show tonight, actually, but that's a little late to plug. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, and then I guess what I do have coming up that I'm really excited about is next month I will be having a, a show at the Blind Tiger on January 24th. Oh, that's cool. At 10 p.m. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I've, I've seen you, like, sporadically you do shows, you know, and I think the last show that I, that, that I was on was that uh, audition, that ha festival audition mm-hmm. thing that we did with Ricky Tedis. Uh, how'd you feel about that? I thought it was good. I mean, I felt good afterwards. I never really feel good about sets, but I felt okay. I thought, yeah. it, was, I thought it was fun. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a good crowd. Like, uh, It was like a last minute show that he put together, so I didn't think anybody was going to show up, and then he had that room pretty packed for that audition thing. Yeah. But it was pretty it cool. Was, it was, yeah. I thought it was a good crowd. I had I had a good time. You know. Yeah. So uh, what's going on with you in, in comedy? Like, Because uh, like I said, you did take a little break and now you, you're going to I took a break, but I've been back for a while. Um, I took a, a, a break that I was still kind of performing on and off, but not really. For a while I was off. Mm. Um, you know, I just had to take care of my own personal things yeah. <laughs> and comedy was not I mean I, I know some people work through it mm-hmm. you know some people can like, still do and I was not doing it it was I don't even think I was really working so yeah I took a like I basically hibernated <laughs> yeah and now I'm I'm back slowly but surely I mean as much as I can be because there's not too many shows Mm-hmm. In, in San Antonio. Very limited here. Yeah. Limited mics and limited shows. I forget sometimes, you know, like that we we don't have. We There's a lot of great shows, but mm-hmm. we need more. Yeah. But so you started in New York, so this has to be completely different. 
So, yeah. I mean, we could just jump into it. Like, how how did you get your start in comedy? So, I actually always wanted to to do like comedic acting, mm-hmm. and so I started doing stand up by way of improv because I took a class at at UCB. I took two classes at UCB, and then I met a friend there, and she told me she was taking a stand up class, mm-hmm. and I was like, you know, I don't think I want. I was like. I think I'd rather do stand up and just do my own thing rather than work off of other people like improv. I just did not like improv and rightfully so improv sucks. And (laughs) so that's how I started. So I took a class. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I've always been very academic, uh, you know, Yeah. I've always been really into school. So like if there's a class for something, I'll probably take it. Mm -hmm. So I, I was like, okay, I'm either going to regret it or I'm not. Yeah. But either way, like, I'm not going to know. And I don't regret it at all. I mean, I'm still friends with a bunch of the people I started with, uh, you know, in New York. And so I was there for a couple of years before I came back. Mm -hmm. And and coming back was really rough for me. But at the same time, I wanted to come back because I always wanted to get on the road and I always wanted to do festivals. And when I was in New York, I really couldn't. Mm -hmm. Like, I would do stuff in Jersey sometimes, and that was, like, getting on the road. Yeah. Or, like, That's a road going, game. like, a little bit upstate was, like, on the road. And so when I came back, I did I did that. And even though I came back and also had a rough, a rough start here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I just didn't want to go on. Like, I had this, like, f- fear of getting on stage for a little bit. Even though you you were already doing yeah. it in New York, what was because it was so different and because like familiar faces. Just like, I think like the whole, I didn't realize the how much the move would affect me, mm-hmm. and I just kind of freaked out, you know, because I think that my real adult life started in in the city after I graduated from college. I only spent like a year and a half in Dallas, and then I went to New York, and that's where I got my first real job, and that's where I started doing stand up, and that's where all my friends were, and then. I came back and my friends and my family are here, but it just wasn't the same, you Mm. know, I just, I didn't know what to expect. And I had never lived in San Antonio. Mm. So how many, how many classes did you take before you actually started doing your shows? I I took one class and then I, I did, uh, I mean, I would do mics and stuff while I was in the class. Yeah. So it was, it was so great. I mean, it was, it was awesome. (laughs) Yeah. See, a lot of people, like they offer classes here and I just think, I don't know about how I feel about comedy classes. I mean, obviously, in New York, New York is different because it's actually working comedians teaching the class. I'm not saying that the ones that are, that are taught here are any lesser, but it's just, I just think it's better to do it on your own, you know, learn on your own with the mics and stuff, you know? I agree. I don't think that you can teach people how to be funny. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I know I'm not saying like, okay, if you start bad, you're gonna, you're never gonna be good because that's not true. But you definitely can't teach people how to be funny. So it's, it was like, okay, the class is basically you're just paying somebody to give you feedback, mm-hmm. but and also paying to to make new friends. <laughs> yeah. Which again, I don't, I don't regret. It was, it was cool. It was really cool. And so, how long were you doing that in New York? What. Uh, the whole comedy, like attempt at comedy. Oh, I was doing it for about four years, I think. Four years, and then yeah, about four years, and I was performing pretty good. I had a lot of momentum over there, and the fact that I like kind of just ejected myself. <laughs> Like you moved right when things were being that good, like the ball was. Uh, rolling. The ball was rolling for me, and then I left, which doesn't make sense, but it. I mean, at the time, it just kind of had to be done. Yeah, that's so weird. Like it, it had to be done. Like the move back had to be done. Like you were just done with the city. Or just, I needed a break. I was yeah. getting really depressed in the winters. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get depressed in the. Well, I'm always depressed, but like I get really depressed in the winter. Even here, and we don't really have a winter. No. But in New York, it was really brutal. You know, I had some, I have friends from there and they're like, you never get used to the cold weather. Like, it's just something that you hate. (laughs) And it was really rough for me. And I was like, there's no way I can do another winter. And then 
for a while I was back and I just kept feeling like I was going to be here for a couple of weeks and then go back. And that's not what, what was happening, mm-hmm. you know? So I also had a boyfriend here and we broke up like as soon as I got here. Y'all were trying the long-term relationship. Yeah, right? yeah, but we weren't together while I was in, we were together in New York and then he was here, which is also stupid, but not really because I was so busy that like, I didn't even think, I was like, this will work itself out eventually. Mm-hmm. But then we broke up before I even moved and then kind of tried to work it out. Yeah. And that didn't work out. So when you moved down here, how long did it take before the ball started to roll again? It took a couple months. It, I, I mean, I was also like off for like maybe f- five months. And, and the good thing about here is like people have always been really friendly and supportive, which is not always the case, I know, but... Since I was in New York, I, I had met a couple of the guys here, like Mike Suarez and mm-hmm. Kool-Aid and Ralph, who none of them live here now, but they all, or Jay Lafar, those were like my fir- the first people that I knew. Oh, yeah. And so they always, they helped me out, you know, mm-hmm. and kind of, I don't know, it gets just acclimated, I guess. Is that the word? Yeah. So shortly after you moved back, right? It was shortly because 2017, you won the uh, the best comedian. Yeah, I was already comedian. I was already here for two years. Oh, okay. I had already been here for two years, and then I or maybe a year and a half, and I won. Yeah. Yeah. How does that work with the current when they vote? Is it just like like people voting, or do they have judges? Is there a competition? People vote. The people spoke, and <laughs> the people I mean spoke. they. <laughs> That's what they got. So, yeah. I mean, I didn't do like any sort of hard campaign at all. I never mentioned it. I didn't think I was going to win. Yeah. Do you remember who your competition was? Who else was on the ballot? No. <laughs> no, I it was I think that the top 3 were like me, I won Larry and somebody else. Kim Curly? Mm. And then the following year was, I don't remember who was top five, but it was like Gletho won, and then I was the runner up. And mm-hmm. then I think Kim again. And then this year I was like, I'm not, like, I'm not part of, I'm not living, I don't live in, I was not living here at the time. So I was like, that's not fair, mm-hmm. you know, to, to be, no. So. It's just a popularity contest, really. Yeah. And so when did you start doing festivals? Was it after that? I started doing festivals around 2016, 2017. Oh, okay. So my first festival was um, Cape Fear in Wilmington, North Carolina. Mm. And that festival, I really liked it. I thought I had a great time. I saw a lot of friends or a lot of people from New York there. So it was really cool to catch up. And I met a a lot of new people too, but that is a very nice city. So to do your first festival there Mm -hmm. and think like, oh, all these festivals are going to be fabulous. Like that is not the case. No, (laughs) no, not at all. Um, And I, I think that year I did like, I went to Detroit. I went to New Orleans. I went to South Carolina. I went to Kansas city. I was supposed to go to um, somewhere else in North Carolina, and I couldn't. And Baltimore was pretty it was a lot. Yeah. So was it rough for you to like to get like really busy with with comedy, like doing the the, the touring, doing road gigs, and then like take breaks and then start up again, like. You know, I don't try to take breaks sometimes. Like, I don't want to be on a break now, and I feel like well, I'm just not booked. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just being honest, you know? <laughs> yeah. So um, that's kind of the case for me right now. I, I need to move. Where do you think about moving to? Probably Austin. Yeah? Um, yeah. Like, I feel like I've been... I did my time, and it's like... I have to move on, like, cause I'm not gonna get where I want to be just being here. Some people, some people can. Mm-hmm. I can't. Like, I, I don't have anything, any, like, reason to stay here. I have a family. I'm not married. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just. It's just me. So, I would like to either go, maybe go back to New York or just move to pro- probably move to Austin. Have you been out to New York since you moved back? Yeah. 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 I, I I went back like twice and stayed for like a couple weeks. Yeah. You just don't want to do the winters again. 
you know, it's weird because like lately I'm like, oh, I want to go back. I, I was supposed to go back, actually. And I was supposed to go back um, after I finished this project I was working on in Laredo. I was supposed to go back um, to New York for about two or three months to work on another TV project. And I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. And we were like pretty sure I was going to get it. I didn't feel sure because I'm never sure about anything, but it fell through. And like, I was like my back, like I was in Denver visiting a friend and then I was going to go from there to New York. Like all my bags were packed. So like Mm -hmm. I was just ready to move. And then I had to change my flight. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, it's whatever, like I laugh about it now because it's like, what, What? you know, shit happens. Yeah. It's nice to have that freedom though. That freedom to just go pick up and move wherever you want. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of, like, you, you were working on projects like films or TV or? Uh, TV, uh-huh. Yeah, I was working on a TV project in Laredo. And then I was uh, going to work on another TV show in, in New York. That was the plan that fell through. Mm-hmm. Was that something that you were always, like, focused on, like, to do, like, writing? Like, or working uh, on, like, TV or it film? Would, it was going to be a little bit of, it was going to be a really good opportunity, uh, for sure, uh, to write. I mean, a little bit of writing and, and producing for something that was, you know, for a, for a big network. And it just fell through. Mm-hmm. And, like, I was pretty upset about it, but then I, I mean, what the fuck? Like, yeah. you know, and then I, it's, cause it's one of those things where you feel like, sometimes I feel like bad things only happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I'm like, oh, only bad things happen to me and that's not the case. Yeah. Well, because you're the only one that feels it. Yeah, you know? I guess so. It's like something that's so, so trivial, like when you wash the dishes, you think you're the only one that washes the dishes in the house or something. So when bad stuff happens, you're like, oh, only bad stuff happens to me. You know what I mean? Because you're, you're the one living through it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I mean everybody has their, their bad stuff, but sometimes it's just overwhelming that you think, is it just bad stuff happening to me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's true. Yeah. But it's it's fine. With it. Is that ever your focus to like just focus on just writing and producing rather than doing stand up or do you? No, pro- that was gonna just be like my side gig. <laughs> yeah, my really cool day job. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I maybe I don't know. Maybe I'll get tired of. I don't know what. I, I, I'm first of all, I'm always tired. So yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if that'll that'll change. Mm-hmm. For me. So you keep it very loose. Like, you don't really set any, like, long-term goals, long-term plans and stuff. Is that, like, a new that's thing? That's not fun. That's not really true. Um, that's not true. I guess it just changes a little bit. Yeah. You know? I mean, it, 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 you got to switch it up every now and then, you know? Yeah. It's always good to, like... Because if you, you set yourself up for, like, all these plans and stuff, and then you start, like, not hitting those goals... You're like you feel you feel bad on yourself. You yeah. feel bad about yourself, you know? Well, especially with stand up, there's no one way. I think at the end of the day, like my main goal is or my main focus is always like to be funny. Yeah. That's what mo- is most important. You know, and people I think people forget sometimes to even be like be funny. Yeah. Like yeah. sometimes people ask me for advice and I'm like be funny. <laughs> Get five funny minutes. Mm-hmm. Some people can't can't do that, and they don't. They're like, "Oh, I'm twenty minutes." Like, excuse me, like get five. Yeah. You know. Yeah, there's a lot of showcases that offer like a, a, like ten minutes, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, and it's just like it's a rough time for a lot of these people, especially for the audience that has to watch it. Yeah. You know. Of course. I mean, like, I'm not saying, like, I, again, like, I'm not, I never feel like, oh, I was awesome after a show. Like, I never really feel great after shows, but the good thing about being, the good thing about being here is that you are able to do more time, but sometimes it's like, you're just not, some people aren't aren't ready. Like, even I feel that way, and I've been doing this for a while. Yeah. I never feel ready. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty new to it, but, like, I was talking to somebody about it yesterday. Like, I always want to quit, like, the minute before I go on stage. Oh, me too. I'm like, that never goes away. <laughs> that never goes away? Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> or sometimes, like, there were times where I, at one point, was doing check spots in New York and watching some of the seasoned comedians go on. I was, like, 
just thinking like they're so good mm -hmm. like I want to quit because like what because this person exists and like the world doesn't need anything else other than this person you yeah, know right. yeah that has to be insane especially like because you see a lot of these these comics that either like they get their start in New York you know like pretty much like you did uh or they start in LA like it's just so weird because those have to be so cutthroat, so rough. Like you have to automatically be good. You couldn't do the shit that you do. That's not really true. No. Okay. There's a lot of bullshit going on. There's a that's everywhere. The trash is, is everywhere. Yeah. Some people are also delusional. Like they don't understand that they're not funny and they keep going. I mean, that's not just a problem here. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's everywhere. That people are just like, wow, really? And they'll keep going. And some of them end up doing it like, pretty well. Yeah. But it's a matter of, like, if I had the work ethic of, like, some, like, I just think of some comedians that are not that great but have an amazing work ethic. And it's, like, I need that. The work ethic? Like, what's your, what's your way about it? I'll put in the work. It? It's not that I won't put, but sometimes, like, I get depressed. Mm -hmm. And I can't work through that all the time. Mm-hmm. There's some people that are like, yeah, I'm depressed, but like, I'm going to just work through it, which is probably the best thing to do. Like, you got to just keep trucking. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, no, I need to like stop every, like everything stops for mm -hmm. me. And I mean, everybody's different. Like, I wish I wasn't like that. I don't know how to, I'm trying to fix it, but like, am, am I even fixing it? Like, no, probably not. Yeah. I need to stay very busy. If I stay very busy, then I don't get as depressed you know, so like things are going good. If I got like a busy week, if I have like three shows and doing all this stuff, like I'm like amped. And then the next week, if nothing's going on, I'm like, get so yeah. That's how dark. I've been. That's how I've I've kind of been. Uh, also, yeah. <laughs> so, do you have any other projects besides comedy? Like anything else to keep you busy? I mean, like anything else to to uh, to like avoid getting depressed? I work. Yeah. yeah, and that's depressing, right? Nobody who likes to work. <laughs> I do like my job, though. I do like my job because um, I don't talk to anybody all day, right? That's how to make me more depressed. <laughs> no human interaction. I don't interact with people at all. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. I put my earbuds on and uh, I just do my work. Everybody is around me, walking around, socializing. I don't, I don't do that. Yeah, no. It's well, the environment, like our environment, is just like it's like this nobody talks mm -hmm. and we just we're just all working mm -hmm. and it's i mean it's pretty cool i, I actually do like it <laughs> you do like, yeah. i do like it it's good yeah. and bad i guess but uh I, I prefer like that you know just stay busy and i don't do like the small talk and stuff the office small talk no that kind of bugs me too you know i do work with tori tori and our co-workers so oh, that's yeah. fun <laughs> so you have a friend at work that's good yes <laughs> hmm so what are what were some of your influences like in comedy and your with your writing and with your style? I can't or even really, just people that you really like. I don't think I don't know if I have a style or like, oh, I kind of want to be like this person, like that kind of vibe or this what you know this style. Mm -hmm. I really love. Um, I've always really liked Nate Bargatze. Yeah, I love him. I've been following him for a couple of years. Sam Morel. Um, I like Ricky Vellis. He's in there. I like a lot of East Coast comics. Mm -hmm. Bill Burr, mm -hmm. um, Dave Chappelle. Who else? I grew up on Jerry Seinfeld. Like I grew up watching Jerry Seinfeld. Um, Are you going to see him this weekend? No. No. I saw him in San Antonio once, and I don't think people know how to behave at comedy shows here sometimes. That's what I heard about the Chappelle show, that a lot of people were just yelling and going oh, crazy. Oh, I can't like imagine. Like it was a concert and stuff. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's a huge he's a huge act, you know, but it's a comedy show at the same time. You need to shut up and listen. But I heard a lot of people, like, were just, like, yelling out. Like, you know, I, the only show that I've, I went, I saw Bill Burr, people were also yelling there, and it's like, what do you, you paid money? Like, who... Why are you ruining ruining this for everybody? Yeah. Die. <laughs> oh, I love Tim Dillon. Yeah. As a death. And I'm like, oh, Tim Dillon. He's one of my favorites, too. There's a lot of people that I like. So you're a big fan of the, like, the, the East Coast comics, though, like the, that yeah. kind of style. I like real, like, I like people to talk about real shit. And that's like, 
oh yeah, like talk about life. Like, no, there's a lot of people not talking about anything that is like, like I want to know about people's lives. I want to know, you know, mm-hmm. like people. I don't know. There's just like ra- weird stuff out there right now that I'm not very into. How close do you like like your material to be like a lot? Like you said, like talk about your real lives and stuff. But of course, you gotta like exaggerate to make it funny at times. I guess. Like how close or how like separate do you like to keep what you talk about on stage? From your real life to what you There's put out no on stage. There's no everything. There's no, like, it's nothing. I don't really hide anything. Yeah. Like, I talk about a lot about my mom, and my mom's at a lot of my shows because, you know, she's like Chris Jenner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody knows my parents. They're, like, always at my shows. So, yeah. like, you'll meet them eventually. But I was like, oh, that's Chris and Bruce. Um, They're like, it's a school recital every time. Yeah, yeah. basically. <laughs> so I talk about my mom. I, I, I'm trying to get a little bit more comfortable with talking about my sister-in-law. I feel like she'll get hurt by it, but I don't know. Yeah. It, what do you, you know what I mean? It's like, well, what do you expect? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you really try to keep it like like 100% like a real story, like self, uh, what is it called? Like one person show yeah. where it's like real stories, real all that stuff. Yeah, everything ha- has happened to me, unfortunately. I wish some of the things were jokes, but it's real. Yeah. And yeah, you make it funny, you put, you know, but. Has that always been your style to be like very revealing? Yes. Yeah. But naturally, I'm, I've always been that way. Like very open. Yes. Yeah. Like I've never, you know, like if something's wrong, I would tell my parents. I think that's why I was never molested. Mm -hmm. I was not molestable. (laughs) <laughs> I thought about that because I was watching this like show, no, this documentary about these gymnasts that got molested and it was horrible. And I was like, I don't, there's no way that I was like, that that would have happened to me. The Olympic, the Olympic, that Olympic doctor. Or whatever yes. Was? Oh yeah. That, he had a lot of cases. So gross. Yeah. Some of their parents didn't believe them, which I thought was ridiculous. First of all, my parents would have been in the room. Mm. Like, I don't so yeah I think because the, I think that comes from being close to my family and, and my mom has told me many times like there's things that you tell me that I wish you wouldn't tell me and I'm like why we're best friends yeah brutally honest yeah you're my bestie yeah I'll tell you everything mom <laughs> she's like no it's just not how it works but that's just how I am so, I don't I am secretive too though with what I want you know yeah but, it, I mean, you enjoy that. You enjoy being, like, 100% on stage and just being, like, honest. Like, that's that's your that's your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Who else kind of, like, writes like that? Like, did you get that, like, from watching a different comic? Or that's just, like, who you that's are? That's just how person? I started writing. Yeah. You know? It was like, well, I don't know anything. What else am I? I'm not going to talk about politics. I don't have anything else that I know. I don't know shit about shit. All these books I read for what? It's like I don't retain any information. Yeah, I can't. I read. read so much. I'm like always watching things. Always like, I'm trying to learn all the time, and then I just don't retain any information, and I can't talk about it yeah. on stage. So I have no choice. <laughs> yeah, I have like this thing, like like trying not to be like too honest, because I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't automatically make it funny. Like it would just be like me, like like doing a one man show type of thing. So I'm trying to like work on that in my writing, but I, I I do a lot of jokey stuff. I don't really keep it 100. percent You know, there's, there's you don't have to. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. But there is there's a lot of I think you can really tell when somebody's be not being honest or when like a story isn't real. Mm-hmm. I think that you can really tell. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can when I'm like that's not a real story. Yeah. But I mean, does it have to be real? It doesn't have to be real. Like you're going it to, not, it's not like, oh, this is exactly what happened. Like you're going to, you could change a couple things here and there, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I, like, I forget who it was, but they were talking about uh, Richard Pryor. You know, like it didn't really matter if the crack pipe was really talking to him, but, but the fact that he made the crack pipe, like talk to him, like he was having a conversation mm-hmm. with the crack pipe, you know, was that real? Did that really happen? Or is he just making this funny? You know, is he just like get offering it more of a funny story than it actually is? Tune in next week so we can smoke crack <laughs> and tell you if the crack pipe. No, talking. but you know what I mean. I mean, like, not, not everything has to like. Yeah, of course. I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty yeah, sure there no, are people that uh, can do like 100 percent real and it's funny. Like they. No, just, nothing's 100 percent real. 
yeah. in anything. Mm-hmm. And nothing matters. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, that was great, man. Uh, so X Lives, I like to talk about uh, other people's like past life before they started with comedy or with comedy writing, anything like that. You know, before you got into comedy, before you even moved to New York, like what was your plan, or who were you planning to be in that? Or you could you could you know talk about that, or maybe like a funny story of comedy, like uh, whatever you feel like sharing. Well, I you know always. You know, I had started out, I went to UT, and I started out as a film major, and then I changed just to, like, public relations. I don't know why I should have just stayed a film major, but um, I thought I wanted to go to law school, so I thought I would be an attorney, and I spent the summers in college working for the district attorney back home, Mm -hmm. and I loved it. I thought it was great, but then it came to a point where, like, I took the, I studied for the LSAT, took the LSAT. I studied aggressively for that stupid test. And the day I took it, I was like, I don't want to go to law school. Like, I don't want to be a lawyer. After you took the test? Yeah, I was like, this is, I'm not going to do it. Like, I need, and and I don't regret not going to law school. Is that a family thing? Because usually lawyers mm, follow well, family. Well, the th- family thing is that my family is very involved politically mm. in Laredo, mm. with Laredo politics. Like, so... I thought I was going to eventually be, like, an elected official. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you just said you're not really into politics. You're just not... I'm into- not into... No, but, like, it's, you know, that's di- that's different. <laughs> like, I'm talking, like, I was going to be, like, a county commissioner or something. Oh. Like, a judge or something. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. that's not really... Yeah, I don't... I was going to be, like, the president. Mm-hmm. I was just trying to be, like, Laredo County, like, like Webb County commissioner. And was that a goal because it was like a financial thing or did you it have like was a sense of... more like, again, like a family type of thing. Mm-hmm. Like it was like, we've always been involved and it was like, all right, it was just going to be my, the thing that I did. And the track that a lot of the kids that I worked with in the summers did. Mm-hmm. So like we were all going, planning on going to law school and we all worked at the DA's office as the district attorney did too. Mm-hmm. He was once, you know, an intern the way we were. And eventually he went to UT also, then went to law school, then came back, was a, you know, a sister district attorney for a couple of years and then eventually ran and became the district attorney, the district attorney. Mm-hmm. So because you saw it happening, because you saw all the steps in front of you, you just felt like it was like... I felt like that was... Uh-huh. That that was like... But that could have happened. Mm-hmm. That can probably... Like, the thing that worries me is that I probably have too much stuff online that people would be like, oh, she's running for something? Well, look at this. Especially like, not like they'll find anything. They'll look yeah. for anything to dig up. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can dig. It's not that hard. You yeah. know, you don't really have to dig. You just have to, to, to scroll. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is fine but sometimes i'm like man should i go back to laredo and just run that run that down Mm -hmm. but no my you know i do have a couple my yeah again my family's very involved and i thought i was just gonna be a some sort of local politician Mm -hmm. is that everything high goals right wow (laughs) so you think that's still a possibility though no Unless, like, if I do some hard drugs, I might lose it and just, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's still drugs in, in politics and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it is. It's true. I don't think that would totally uh, disqualify you. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, look, when I was in college, like, I don't want you to think, like, oh, you always just wanted to be this, like, local chump. That wasn't it. But once I got to that age, that's what felt like. That's what it felt like. That's what I was supposed to do. Mm-hmm. But I always wanted to perform and to to do again, like more like acting. Mm-hmm. Um, I had really not. I love stand up, but I would never thought about doing it mm-hmm. again because I was too busy like worrying about what other people wanted me to do rather than like what I actually wanted to do for myself. Mm-hmm. So it's been a lot of. It's been a lot of trial and error and error. 
Yeah. <laughs> was there anybody close to you that like kind of like inspired you to do something else besides doing doing mm. law or? No, no, because I have a lot of people in my family who are very creative. Also, I have a big family, so it's not like. Um, from this small family of amazing people. My family's big. Yeah. So, you know, we got a lot of people. Right. And I have some family that they're very talented in, in different ways, like musically. Like mm-hmm. I have some cousins that are amazing, just like singers, musicians. And it's like, to me, I think of them and I'm like, you could have done something. And they just don't like, I think culturally too, like we don't, we come from a place where like, or I do, where people don't, go follow their dreams like that's not a thing like you a lot don't, of people do don't risk it yeah they don't risk it and i get it like sometimes i'm like yeah i i wish i wanted to do something easy mm-hmm. you know because that would make things just like so much that made my life so much better mm-hmm. but you can't unwant things and there's been times where i told my like one time i like had this announcement with my close friends i was like okay guys i think i'm gonna quit comedy and they were like "Mm, shut the fuck up no you're not and i was like okay i'm sorry (laughs) yeah you just can't let it go no and i just hope that one day like you're like okay this is i used i have i've had some moments where i'm like all right this is this is the right path or like if i'm even thinking about quitting like some i the phone will ring within 24 hours Mm -hmm. somebody will text me somebody will call me to book me and i'm like you know that's kind of how i keep going (laughs) yeah what was one of those moments where you, you you knew like oh this is the right path i think that's there's been i mean there's that's like an almost like an a feeling of like I know that this is what I'm supposed to do. I don't know if like I'm never sure again mm. of like what is happening because sometimes again I like we're talking about like I always like feel like what I should quit like this nothing's working like that. Mm-hmm. But just little like when you whenever I have a good set like whether it's at a small show at the blind tiger or a huge show and I have a great set. I'm like, this is, this is it. Like Mm -hmm. this is. It validates everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but so that's, so it's, and that's often that I have a great, a good time at a show. I don't always, I always have fun, but I don't always like, I'm never really satisfied with my sets. Well, that's a good thing. I mean, like, th- there's some people, like you mentioned earlier, that they're just so delusional about what they're doing up there and who they actually are. I mean, it's you shouldn't be satisfied. You should always need to do better and want to do better. Like, oh, I could work on this for the next time. And, you know what I mean? Like, don't mm-hmm. you think that's a healthy thing to have? Yeah, and I think that's part of coming from New York. That's, I mean, I came from a place where it was like, oh, you want to get in at the club? Well, you need to... You're going to do four minutes while people while people are getting their checks and no one's going to pay attention to you. You're going to eat shit and then you're going to have to clean up these tables and seat people after for mm-hmm. the next show. Mm-hmm. And that's like you would I would never I think the most I ever got paid was like one time I made like 20 bucks or maybe 30 dollars. Mm-hmm. And that was a couple of years already at that point, like over two years in. And now people do it for a couple months and they're like, oh, like it's not enough money. And it's like, oh, excuse me. Yeah. And that's why I'm, I mean, I always feel like I'm learning and I always try to stay humble. I'm, I mean, I, I think sometimes I give people the wrong impression. Like, I guess people have mentioned to me that I seem like bitchy. Well, I am, but. <laughs> But it's not like I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm above you or something. Not at all. Yeah. You know? Why do you think they they get that? I've been in a bad mood lately, but <laughs> I'm just not that social as social as I used to be. And then I don't like to be getting, I don't like to drink too much sometimes. Like, there's been times where, like, I drink a little too much when we're out and there's, like, comics around. And I'm just, like, I don't know. I don't know. You become a mean drunk? No. Well, just an honest drunk? No, it's just like, 
I'm the type of person, like, I don't like being, if I'm, if I'm not close to you, like, I don't feel comfortable being, like, really wasted around you or being, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> I am very nice. Yeah. Usually. You just get in a bad mood. Or, like, sometimes I'm just, like, thinking about my set or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. And I just don't want to socialize. Yeah. It's normal. <laughs> right. So how? You, what are you gonna do now to try like stay more busy? Is it? Is it like? Are you gonna try to travel more? Maybe hit the I want to get back bit? to to. I want to travel more. I think that's what honestly makes me the happiest. Like as it, if I'm doing a road show, it can be anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like I have had fun in the shittiest towns, like with a crowd of two people. Mm-hmm. If I'm leaving, <laughs> I'm happy, you know? And leaving again, San Antonio? Like keep... Anywhere. Leaving anywhere. Yeah. If okay. I'm leaving to go do stand-up and get paid, hopefully, then I'm having a good time, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's just kind of keeping more momentum. And, and that's kind of why I feel like it's, it's time to, to leave. It feels like I've been at community college for four years instead of two. Mm. That's what I feel like right now. Mm. Even though I never went to community college, but I, I would imagine that's what it, <laughs> it feels like, you know? Like, it's like, all right, you're done. You're mm. doing victory laps. Yeah. What other, what other scenes have you checked out besides here in New York? I mean, I, I guess when you do festivals, you kind of get a sense of the scene. Mm-hmm. Um, outside, I would really... I'm not too, f- I know people from the Houston scene, but I'm, that scene seems pretty cool. And of course, Boston, you know, I know a bunch of people there in mm-hmm. New York, LA, I have some friends out there, but I'm not too familiar with the scenes. But every, you know, every big city is going to have a pretty decent little stand up scene. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of start to see, like, once you kind of, like, if you start doing festivals a lot, you'll start to see, like, oh, this person's a festival comic. He does a lot of festivals. But, and then everyone kind of just starts to connect, mm-hmm. which, is, which is good, you know. But, yeah. Like, I had a friend. I was I went to Milwaukee for a wedding, and I thought about doing a set, but I was too busy doing wedding things. But I hit up a friend, and he's like, yeah, like, I know people. He just knows people everywhere. Yeah. Like I want to be like that. I want to be like, yeah, I'll hook you up. You're going to, you're going to Iowa. I know, I know somebody there. A little put you up. Yeah, somebody that knows somebody everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So. But that takes being social. I know. I used to be very social. Yeah, I've never been the social type. I would like to know a lot of people. Like be like how you just said, somebody that knows somebody in every town. I don't. Well, being social is part of, like, the problem for me is that sometimes I have a lot of social things, too, that get in the way of... Focusing on comedy? Yeah. Not focusing, but, like, I'll have commitments at, like... You know, I have weddings, I have life stuff, Mm -hmm. and I'm starting to notice, like, a lot of people don't... A lot of comedians don't really... Like, especially here, I feel like... I just feel like my social circle is like aggressive right now and they need to calm down. What do you mean aggressive? Like ever, people are getting married. People are having children. Like I have to check in with people. I have to go to this, go to that. <sighs> family. My family's huge. Yeah. So going to family events and sometimes it's like, yo, I don't, I think it just comes with being from, being from a small, a small city and having a huge family and a lot of friends that I grew up with and being closer to them now. I was in New York before. I didn't have to go to shit. Yeah. If I missed your wedding, I missed your wedding. You I had an excuse. S- yeah. I still miss a lot of weddings, but I tell people, if you want me to go to your wedding, you have to put me in it most <laughs> of the time. <laughs> you got to book me. <laughs> yeah, you got to book me like for a bridesmaid. And I'm tired of, I'm actually tired of being a bridesmaid. Like, this will be the third. I have another wedding, and I think this will be the third wedding where I'm the fattest one, and I'm done. <laughs> I'm done being the FBM. That's what I call it. It's like you want to be, you want to be there. You want them to book you, but at the same time, you don't want to be there, and you don't want to be a part of it. I want everyone to miss me all the time. Yeah. Like I don't want to be there, but I still want everyone to invite me to things. Oh man, I get that. So you know, much. like I'm like, 
I want everyone to like want to miss something, and then I want everyone to tell me how much they missed me. And then yeah. I'm like, I'm sorry, I was busy. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're sleeping. <laughs> it's yes. like that. Uh, I think it was Mark Norman that said, um, "If you have a party, I don't want to go. But if you don't invite me, I'm gonna kill myself." Yes, <laughs> I, that's exactly it. <laughs> God, yeah. said, oh, I love Mark Norman too. I didn't mention him, but he's amazing. No, he's he's funny. Yeah, I I guess I do. I mean, I like a lot of like L.A. comics, uh, West Coast comics, but most of the ones that I, I really dig are uh, are East Coast. I guess they just have like an automatic style, and they're all different. You know, like yeah. Mark Norman's different than Nate Bergazzi, and, and they're all different, but they all have that same kind of connected style some, somehow. I don't know. Yeah, I love Mark Norman. Yeah, and he's like. He's just so likable, and if you if he ever does shows here, like he's very friendly, mm. and that's what makes me like him even more. You know, when people are friendly, I like them even more. Yeah, I know he was doing shows with Seinfeld, and and Seinfeld yes. would be here on Friday. I was kind of hoping that he would jump on that one. Is but he not on it? I don't think so. I haven't seen. He anything. usually comes every year, or so or it seems like I don't know every year, but I mean, I know he was here for the last. No wait, I, I think Cap I saw City. him. 2017. Mm. So I don't think he came 2018 or 19. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, he's one. Of, he's one of my favorites and stuff. So is that a reason to to leave as well? Because you want to kind of disconnect yourself from the family, the busyness of the family. Yeah. Yeah. I do have some some nieces that I'm really close to in Laredo that I don't I don't want to be too far away from. Mm -hmm. And so that makes it it. That makes it hard. And even I feel like moving to Austin because of traffic and stuff like it, it does. It's harder to go to Laredo from there, you know, but they're getting a little older. So I'm like, no, they could just come to me. Mm -hmm. I hope. Yeah. But it's hard. I mean, I have stuff too. like I can't just be like, oh, I have nothing because I do have things. But again, they're all Lar I can't live in Laredo. No. no. Laredo's kind of like, what's the scene like in Laredo? I'm, I'm heading out there and, and uh next Wednesday um I'm not sure what the scene is like I I I know some of the guys are really cool cool people um and they've created a scene and people are going to the shows there which is for me I'm like that's awesome because yeah. like I'll have people like friends be like oh I went to a comedy show and I'm like good keep going mm -hmm. like you can make a scene anywhere you know so they've they have made their scene there and that's good and they bring people from out of town to come do shows and people show up. Those shows are always packed. Yeah. What What would you do locally to make kind of like an impact, a positive impact on the comedy Nothing. scene? Nothing. Right. I mean, look, when people come through uh, other comics from out of town or, you know, anybody's at a show, I, I try to be nice. I am a nice person. Mm -hmm. But like San Antonio, for some reason, got this like bad rep, I guess, from I think... River Center, that's what they say, or the comedy club. I don't know. Yeah. So I was just trying to be, like, nice to people, and if p people come from out of town, you know, I'll help them out any way I can. But I I don't know. Like, I'd like to, again, like, I mean, I'm, I'm going to start having, hopefully monthly, I don't know yet, but, you know, we're going to have the first run next month. It'll be a little bit different, more like a late-night format. Mm-hmm. And hopefully that that'll you know, like a late. It'll night. be like a different type of show. What do you mean, like late night, like a TV show? Yeah, but live. I mean, well, they are live, but <laughs> <laughs> in front of people. <laughs> yeah, so it's like not gonna be exactly like oh, this is like Jimmy Fallon, uh -huh. but we're we're trying to we're working on the format now to kind of. I'd like music. I'd like to have some music. Oh, this is something you're actively yeah, you're actively working on. Yeah, this is happening. On. This Talk is happening that. next so, month. Oh, okay. January twenty fourth. Be there, or I will die. What's what? What are you calling it? It's called. It's called always late. Always late. Mm -hmm. And with Gabby the heading now, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah. And you're gonna have like people come on. And, I like, don't. Do, like, a, yeah. So I I like want to do. Couch and the band. Yeah. And, so we're doing it at Blind Tiger. So I'm like, how do I make this look different? Because uh, the stage is a little bit small, but there's two stages. So yeah. I'll, we're going to, I think, uh, kind of check it out and figure it out this Friday. So what? Because um, Abby used to have a show. I don't know if you know Abby, but mm -hmm. Abby Bennis used to have a show. And it was, she would face it the other, she would do it on the other stage. Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah, because we have a TV. We have stuff in there. Yeah. So I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be really fun. I hope so. Like I'm already, I picture it in my mind, but I don't know if that's how it's going to be. And who are you working on this with? Um, Tori's helping me out and just whoever I like cry, go cry to, which is like, you know. Oh, so you haven't built a team for this yet? Like it's still just you and Tori. It's not really idea? a team that is in it. Yeah. Like Tori's helping me out because she runs, well, because she's my friend and she's going to be involved no matter what, but, um, and because she, you know, runs a couple shows at the Tiger and, well, she basically runs runs the show there. Mm-hmm. So she's going to help me out. I don't really need, like, I don't think I need a team, but I've already asked, like, the usual suspects mm-hmm. to, like, I'm like, hey, don't book anything mm-hmm. on this day because I need you. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if my format changes. I would like to do, like, an interview... With somebody, like, people that are interesting in San Antonio or from wherever. Yeah. And stand-up and music. Like, a late-night show. Mm-hmm. Maybe, like, some stupid game or something. I don't know. That's very interesting. And it's coming up next month, so I yes. think you need to know. <laughs> yes, I do. I need to know, but it's fine. Yeah. You work well, like, last minute, under pressure. Yeah, and it's not really going to be last minute because it's... I don't think it's really last minute. Like, it's going to be fine. Yeah. You ever thought about starting your own podcast or maybe making that like a podcast type of thing? Yeah. People ask me about like if I would want to do a podcast and and some people would ask have asked if I want to do it with them and like I do enjoy doing like, you know, being on like Kabaza's podcast. Um and I think I might just have to i i guess do one by myself mm-hmm. but i'm not sure how well, much does this cost how much do i have to pay for this shit uh all this setup was like a little under a thousand yeah well guess who's not having a podcast yeah. i'm just kidding i'm just <laughs> totally kidding uh i mean you could do it on your phone you could do it like it's i mean anybody could do a podcast now like you just need a phone or i would like a th- the thing is is like I don't. Sometimes I don't even know if I'm that interesting, but I'm like, well, I have guests. Like, am I just gonna talk? I don't know. Yeah. I do video. Mm. I started doing these like videos on Instagram that like I'll add you to the list. <laughs> There's like a list of close friends that I have, which is not close friends. It's just more like ways to block my family out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could do that on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. And so like I'll do these like dumb videos. I started making like drinks. One time I made this drink, mm-hmm. uh, like a tutorial. Mm-hmm. But it's not really planned. Like I just did it. So I'm like, should I be like more active on Instagram? Like become like an Instagram person. Mm-hmm. But like I don't like social media. What don't you like about it? Just all the bullshit. But it's ne- it's necessary though, especially. It is, and that's comedy, the problem for arts, for yes, promotion, it's like, for networking. Ugh. But like, stop already! Like, <laughs> uh, what would we do the old school way? Just like wait to be discovered. That's not the way it works anymore. Like, no. You can build your own anything. Yeah. You can release your own special. Yeah. Do you think? The fact the fact that it is so easy is a good thing or a bad it's thing. It's a bad for, thing for new comics. Why? It's a it's a bad thing because right now there's too much going on. There's a lot of clutter. There's a lot of noise, and some of the, you need to cut some of the fat. Yeah. You know, like just people that are a waste of space. <laughs> that doesn't sound like something a nice person would say. Well. I thought you were trying to be nice. That's, uh, yeah, that was me being nice. I had, you know, wanted to say something else. But, <laughs> <laughs> that was, but you don't me really. being uh, honest. I mean, like, you don't, you don't really, like, uh, you don't do Facebook. You don't do too much of the social media. I thing. hate Facebook. Facebook is so gross. Yeah. And Mark Zuckerberg doesn't like me either, so whatever. What if he doesn't like you? I have this, like, I had a funny joke that didn't get that many likes, and I was pissed. And oh, uh, whole algorithms is his yeah, fault. and I'm like, oh, he's watching me. <laughs> I've said ISIS too many times that like I'm being like, what is it like? 
silence. <laughs> yeah, you can say ISIS a lot on Twitter. You do Twitter a lot. I'm start. I I do Twitter when I'm. V- I like Twitter actually. Mm-hmm. But the thing with Twitter is like everybody's a comedian on Twitter, and then on like now there's like what like TikTok. Everybody's a comedian on TikTok. I refuse to do TikTok. I'm yeah, not, I'm, I'm too old for that. that. My I'm friend not- maybe get the app, and my nieces will send me stuff, but like eh, it's whatever. But but everybody's trying to be funny, you know. Yeah. Or like become viral, and that's their ticket. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a bad thing because it, it, it it's makes a, it yeah. uh, like anybody could do it. You know, it's like it's like a big open mic, pretty much. Yeah, but that being said, it's like if you're talented and you're funny, like people are gonna find you. Mm-hmm. I think. I mean, it's what we have to tell ourselves, you know, to keep going. Yeah. Well, cool. Good luck with all that. Your your show. Hopefully, it, it all comes together. And hopefully, yeah. you stick with it for it'll, the monthly. Yeah, it'll. Oh, you should come. Yeah, <laughs> right? sure. I need about. audience. <laughs> yeah, I about. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you for doing this. Let's do replugs again. How can people find oh, you? Like, well, obviously, don't try <laughs> Facebook. I will answer Facebook Messenger a little late, but whatever, you can add me there. But um, Instagram, Twitter is the best way to to get to me right now. My website is under construction, so I'll. But that's GabbyTheHedina.com. And uh, Twitter, Instagram, Gabby I Tijerina. Yeah. Any other shows? I know you got a show tonight, but any yeah, other I show shows? Tonight. Yeah, I I know I have shows, and I feel really bad that I'm drawing a blank, but I got some other stuff coming up I probably should think about. <laughs> I don't know. January. It's stuff in January. Yeah. We'll just yeah. post it on your social media. Yeah, follow me. People will follow me. you. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Blind Tiger Comedy Club. You can follow them on Instagram at Blind Tiger Comedy. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Patrick C. Huerta or at Baba Core. Uh, find us on Facebook. You still got a Facebook, right? You just don't actively. Yeah, I use it sometimes. Okay. So you can find us on Facebook as well. Um, I have a show December 11th. Uh, in Laredo at the Rooftop Lounge. Have you been there nice. before? No, but I heard it's fun, and I heard that show's really cool. Yeah, uh, Larry Garza's headlining, so that's going to be fun. Uh, so it's Big John, uh, Raymond Cabrera, and it's hosted by Aaron Suarez, the uh, Laugh Laredo people. Yeah, awesome. Around. So it should be fun. Uh, that's it. Thanks for listening. Uh, see you all next week. Thanks. <laughs>